Hello and welcome to video 5 for week 2. In this video we're going to talk about approximation and the idea of Taylor polynomials. So what do I mean by a Taylor polynomial for a function? Well if I have an analytic function, so a function that has a Taylor series, then its Taylor series centered at some point alpha is given by this expression, coefficients calculated by derivatives, evaluated at the center point, so forth and so on. And this function is exactly equal to its Taylor series inside a certain radius of convergence. But instead of going all the way to infinity, I could just go to a certain point. So instead of having infinitely many terms, I could truncate it and say, well, just give me the first seven terms. Just give me the first 36 terms. And that gives me now a polynomial. This is no longer an infinite series. And this polynomial is no longer equal to the function, but it's similar to the function. And this is the idea of a Taylor polynomial. So this is called the degree d Taylor polynomial of the function f at the center point alpha. Its terms are given the same way. They're higher derivatives evaluated at the center point. It just stops at a certain place. And I want to walk you through a couple of examples to show you sort of how this works. So let's think about the exponential function. So here are the first few terms of the Taylor series of the exponential function. It's equal to this if I include the dot dots, meaning this goes off to infinity. In the, in the infinite series, I have exact equality. But I could truncate this. So I could say it's approximately equal to 1 plus x truncated at this step, or 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 truncated there, or the first four terms truncated there, or the first five terms truncated there. All of these things are Taylor polynomials. This is degree 1, degree 2, degree 3, degree 4 different degree approximations to the exponential function. And let me show you visually what this looks like. Here's your exponential function. Your degree one polynomial is just a line. And that's not a great approximation. If you just care about this little range here, it's pretty good there, but there's a big range out here, so it, it's not perfectly ideal as an approximation. The degree two approximation is a quadratic, so that's this p2 polynomial p2, and you see it's better, it goes out a little bit further closer to the exponential function. So at these spots here, the p2 approximation is certainly better than p1, but as we go out here, it gets pretty poor again. p3 is a cubic, so this is some cubic that from here to about there, looks like it's a pretty good approximation. So the range at which this is a good approximation, the degree, degree to which this is matching the original function is increasing, but there's still a place where it's good and a place where it's not terribly good. And as I keep going, I get better and better approximations. At the end, this is almost exactly the same thing now, and this degree four thing from here onward is almost exactly the same function. There's your degree five polynomial, and this is getting much closer even out here. From this point on, it almost matches. You can't even tell the difference between the degree five polynomial and the function up here. So as the degree increases, I get a shape that more and more carefully and closely matches the original shape of my exponential function. Let's see the same thing with the sine function. So here's the Taylor series for the sine function, only with odd terms. I can truncate it and get a degree 1, degree 3, degree 5, degree 7 approximation. Again, this is equality because this goes on to infinity. This is approximately equal because each of these truncations are only a piece of the function. They're not exactly the function. Um, I don't have any even terms here, uh, any even degree polynomials here, because I don't have any even terms in the original Taylor series for the sine function. So let's see what this looks like. Here's your sine function. There's your linear approximation, which is pretty good close to the origin. And this might be one you're already familiar with. Sine x is approximately equal to x for small angles, often called the small angle approximation. But this quickly becomes poor, and that's to be expected. This is a line, and the sine function wobbles all over the place. This is as good as you can get to approximate the sine function with just a line. A degree 3 polynomial is a cubic, and this is better. It already sort of approximates the first sort of oscillation. Now a cubic can only do one oscillation like this, so this is the best you can get with the cubic, but it goes out to about here, goes out to about here as a reasonable approximation. Here's a degree four, five approximation. So now I'm allowed to go up, down, up, down, up. So I have sort of from here to here, a fairly reasonable approximation of what the sine function is doing. 
And as I get higher and higher degrees, I have more flexibility in the number of changes of direction. So this P7 is pretty good from here all the way out to here. So it has all of this up and down behavior of the sine function encoded, encoded in this degree seven polynomial. And the degree nine polynomial is even better. It goes from here to about here. So it encodes, encodes this up, this down, this up quite well as a degree nine polynomial. And you could keep going higher and higher degree polynomials would get closer and closer to approximating the sine function. So that's the whole idea of a Taylor polynomial. It has a range over which it's a good approximation and a range past which it's no longer going to be a good approximation. Speaking of approximations, one of the reasons we do Taylor approximations is to actually calculate values. If I give you an infinite series for a function, it's not very useful for calculating values because to calculate with it, you still would have to do an infinite amount of work. That's not possible. But if I truncate it, it's now a finite number of steps. You can do it by hand or you can get a computer to do it. And Taylor series are in fact one of the most important and the, the earliest type of approximation method where I could use a computer to calculate values of something. So let me try and calculate the value of ln two in a couple of different ways to show you how this works. We had a series in the previous video for negative ln one minus x that we calculated using an integral technique. And if I'm sort of clever, ln two is the same thing as negative ln one half because of logarithms and exponents. This is the same thing as negative ln one minus a half. So in this form, if I put one half into this series, I get an expression that gives me a value for ln two. And if I take the first six terms, if I truncate it with the first six terms, I get this sum. That's just putting one half into here, calculating from zero to five. Um, I'll get this sum. And if I do the arithmetic, uh, I get that these six terms add up to the fraction 1327 over 1920, which is approximately equal to 0 0.9691145833. And then the three repeats at the end. So this gives me an approximate value for ln two from a degree five um, Taylor polynomial to this particular function. We also knew that ln two was the value of the harmonic series. So let's actually try and truncate the harmonic series. So here's a truncated harmonic series after its first 10 terms. If I do the arithmetic and add up all these fractions, I get 1627 over 2520 which is 0 0.645 plus a long repeating term. The value for ln two I calculated on the previous page from the Taylor series, I've repeated at the top of the page here. Now I asked a, a computer with a more advanced algorithm for its value for ln two, and it told me ln two is approximately 0 0.969314, and that's accurate to more than five decimal places. And I see that this matches the six, but already in the second decimal, this is off by five. Whereas this matches the six, this matches the nine, is only off by two in the third decimal. So this approximation, even though I only needed six terms, was much better than this approximation, even though I went all the way out to 10 terms. And this leads into the topic that I'm gonna to pick up in the next video, is if we're gonna do approximation, how do we know how good our approximations are? If I'm gonna use a Taylor series to calculate values of the logarithm by computer, well, how do I know how good they are? How do I know that it's within one or two or three or four decimal points? And that is the subject of error analysis, which will be the topic of the next video.